So let's get the inside story on the memo from the man in charge. Devin Nunes is the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee that released this document. Mr. Chairman, thanks for joining us. Great to be with you, Brett. What do you think the biggest takeaway from this memo is in your eyes? Well, I'm sad that we had to get to this point. Uh, we should have never, never been here. It's unfortunate. Uh, I didn't want to have to do this. Uh, but the sad part is, is that I have an obligation to the American people when we see FISA abuse, so these are secret courts that exist uh, to target uh, for foreigners, for catching terrorists, for catching people who might be bad actors. Uh, and the American citizens that are represented before this court uh, have to be protected. And the only place that can protect them is the U.S. Congress uh, when abuses do occur. Did you write So it's not a place we wanted to go. It's not a place we wanted to go, but it's where we had to go. Did you write it? Uh, myself, Trey Gowdy, our two investigators, uh, and then obviously checked by the lawyers and the rest of our committee members. Did you read the actual FISA applications? No, I didn't. Uh, the, and this has been uh, one of these uh, bogus news stories that have been put out. Uh, so the agreement we made with the Department of Justice was to create a reading room uh, and allow one member and two investigators to go over and review the documents. Uh, I thought the best person on our committee would be the chairman of the Oversight Committee, Trey Gowdy, who has a long career as a federal prosecutor, uh, to go and do this. Uh, and then they, over a series of meetings, would come back with their notes and brief the rest of the committee members. Did you or anyone on your committee coordinate in any way with President Trump or the administration on the release of this memo? No, in fact, we opened up this investigation. No, we, in, in fact, we opened up an investigation into DOJ and FBI for FISA abuse and other matters uh, last summer, in the summer of 17. How about with President Trump's lawyers in any way? No. Outside conservative groups, just one today, put out an ad that's targeting Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, uh, saying that he needs to do his job or quit. Uh, any, it seemed like it was timed out, but did you work with any outside groups in the formulation of this memo? Uh, no, no, I didn't. In fact, I personally like Rod Rosenstein. Uh, but look, the bottom line here is, is both Mr. Rosenstein, Mr. Sessions, Attorney General Sessions, and Director Ray uh, have work to do. And they can't start doing their work to root out the problems if you don't admit first that you have a problem, and they've been unwilling to do that. Uh, but, uh, but no, I don't work with outside right. groups on this. The FBI, DOJ, other intel agencies all say there are material omissions in this memo. What, it, what did you leave out? Is there, is there justification for the FBI behavior you detail in this <clears throat> memo that, that we have yet to learn? Yeah, so, so we looked specifically at just FISA abuse. We wanted to keep sources and methods out. If you remember, 10 days ago, we were accused of a lot of things, especially that we were going to disclose our nation's top secrets. I think everybody's learned that was a total fallacy that was put out by the left and the mainstream media. Uh, we didn't disclose any secrets. Part of that is we had to take all of this information and reduce it down into a, into a summary with just the pertinent facts about the FISA abuse. Uh, the only area that I am familiar with uh, that uh, we, we left out uh, would be the, the history of Carter Page. Uh, I explained why we left this out to the director of the FBI. The director of the FBI is well aware of my concerns about Mr. Page, uh, and I don't believe that uh, somebody like Mr. Page should be a target uh, of the FBI, especially using uh, salacious information uh, paid for by a political campaign like this dossier was about Mr. Page, and then supplemented by a news story uh, that was, that was, per, that was actually created uh, by Christopher Still himself, the author of the dossier. Uh, this, is, this is outrageous that this happened. Will you vote to release the Democrats' memo? Yeah, we, we will. When uh, is that going to happen? Uh, but it, ha but it, has to go through the, it has to go through the same process. When do you think it'll be so, released? Uh, hard, hard to say. I don't, I don't know yet. We haven't even, I have, I've only read through it once. We, we're going to have to go through and scrub it uh, again. Uh, and let's not forget, uh, these are the same Democrats who never wanted to start an investigation. Uh, these are the same Democrats who blocked our subpoenas or tried to block our subpoenas back in August. Uh, they tried to block our, oper our ability to go and get the uh, records from Fusion GPS that led to a lot of the discoveries in this investigation. So uh, these are not honest actors. Uh, they know they're not being honest actors. And, uh, you know, I, I get tired of playing whack-a-mole every day 
uh, with the Democrats on this committee who uh, never wanted to start this investigation in, in the first place. Democrats are criticizing a lot, as you can imagine. I'm sure you've heard. But they're jumping on one particular part of the memo in particular. The, the uh, number four, the memo states that then Deputy Director of the FBI, Andrew McCabe, quote, testified before the committee in December 2017 that no surveillance warrant would have been sought from the FISA court without the Steele dossier information. Democrats say he never said that, did he? Yeah, I mean, this is it's a summation of, of a long interview, uh, and that is uh, definitely what he said. Uh, not to mention, we have other witnesses who said uh, very similar things. Uh, so the, the fact of the matter is, the main uh, the main things that were used to go out and get this uh, and get this warrant uh, was the dossier and the story that corroborated the dossier. So why not and put McCabe's it. quote in there or release the transcript? Uh, well, that wouldn't be a whole process that we'd have to go through. Actually, the quotes, I think, are pretty damning themselves. So uh, it would, I wouldn't mind doing that, but we would have to go through a whole process to release transcripts. So you were getting to the point about how much of the FISA applications uh, relied on the Steele dossier. What was the characteristic? You said they were integral or it was integral? Yeah, they wouldn't have received a warrant without the dossier. The dossier was was presented to the court as, as it was as if it was true. Uh, the court was not told that the Democrats actually paid for this. And, and, and just step back for a moment. This is not trying to go after some terrorist. This is about they opened the FBI opened a counterintelligence investigation into the Trump campaign in the summer of 2016. That's what happened. And then they got a warrant on someone in the Trump campaign using opposition research paid for by the Democratic Party and the Hillary Clinton campaign. That's what this is about, and it's wrong, and it should never be done. Is it true that the FBI led the FISA application with the dossier? Yeah, most of the, uh, the, uh, the largest percentage of the, of the entire application has to do with the dossier and then using the news story to corroborate the dossier. There are Democrats on your committee talking on another channel today who insisted that the FISA court was told of the political nature of this information. Take a listen. Is there anything Thanks, inappropriate, uh, do you think, about a partisan political document, uh, the Steele dossier, being used in an application to surveil an associate of a presidential candidate, in this case, Carter Page, especially if that fact is not disclosed in the application? Is that inherently wrong, do you think? Uh, Jake, that fact uh, was disclosed. Uh, it was disclosed to the FISA court uh, that uh, part of the evidence uh, was from a politically motivated source. True. I, I, no. I mean, this, this is the things I said earlier. I mean, these guys tell so many lies, you can't keep track of them. That's not true. No. Uh, the, court was, the court was not made aware. And I, and I would think that a judge, if the judge knew that, hey, we're opening it, we have an investigation of the Trump campaign, we're going after this Trump campaign advisor, and oh, by the way, Hillary Clinton's campaign paid for all this information. If, if that did happen, which it didn't, but if that, if that court did know that, uh, the judge would have to be, uh, I think, uh, considered very suspect. But I, I don't believe that that, uh, that that happened at all. Uh, the former FBI director, James Comey, I know you heard in John's piece, uh, tweeted out, that's it, and went on to criticize this entire operation. Your thoughts on uh, that tweet and Comey's reaction? Well, Mr. Comey had a chance in January, February, March, April, I believe all the way till June, uh, to come clean on who paid for the dossier. Uh, he was asked about it in January, and he said very clearly that he knew that Republicans had started the dossier, which was a lie. And then, uh, when asked and probed further, well, who finished the dossier, he didn't know. Now, maybe he was lying, maybe he didn't know, but both seemed to be a problem. So Mr. Comey's welcome to come back, tell us uh, when exactly he learned that the Democratic Party and the Hillary Clinton campaign paid for the dossier. Uh, he's welcome to come back and share that information. Uh, but, uh, uh, but I think the American people understand that the FBI should not go to secret courts using information that was paid for by the Democrats to open up investigations and get warrants on people of the other political party. That's Comey, the type of stuff that happens in banana republics. Comey said in testimony that some of the dossier is unverified and salacious. Are there parts of the dossier that are true? Uh, what, that uh, Russia is a country and Carter Page is a person? I mean, other than that, I don't know anything. So you don't know be, anything that's that been be corro true. corroborated by mm -hmm. Intel as a part of that dossier? 
No, very little. And I, th I think if you actually look at that dossier from the beginning, I don't know what FBI agent, what they were smoking, that they would think that Carter Page, uh, who's somebody who, doesn't, who hasn't had a job for many years, uh, who, who is obviously a Russian sympathizer, but that somehow the Russians, who actually said he was an idiot uh, in court testimony, this was presented before the court, uh, so Russian agent said that Carter Page was an idiot. Uh, and do you think that the Russians were going to offer him like a 19% share of the major oil company in Russia? I mean, this is crazy. And so when somebody first reads that dossier, I would think you would come away from that and think, okay, this is really pretty, wi this is wild stuff. In Ms. fact, it was probably, there's a good chance, let's not forget where the dossier came from, it came from Russians. So, so there's clear evidence of collusion with the Russians, it just happens to be with the Hillary Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee that uh, the news media fails to talk about or fails to even investigate. Mr. Chairman, you know FISA is controversial to begin with. It was a challenge for reauthorization, Section 702 recently. Members often look for reasons to vote against FISA, uh, some of them, civil liberties concerns. Wasn't the cart before the horse here? Was the memo withheld until FISA Section 702 was voted on? By Congress? No. So, so remember, 702 is different. It, it Understood. It's different, but it still affects, affects found, the overall we, authorization. But, but we found no uh, abuses within 702. I made that clear to my colleagues. Don't forget, the FBI and DOJ stonewalled us. We had to subpoena documents in August. We had several meetings all through the fall trying to get documents. Remember, in, at the beginning of January, people tend to forget this, when the FBI director and uh, Mr. Rosenstein tried to do an end run about, uh, around our committee and attempted to go to the speaker so that we would not hold them in contempt. That was not until, that was not until just a few weeks ago. Right. So it took Let me the ask you about that. January 10th, them. there was supposedly a meeting where Rosenstein comes up to you uh, about document production, and it got fairly heated. Uh, is that accurate? Uh, look, I, I mean, I've had several uh, meetings with Mr. Rosenstein, uh, and, and I like him personally. And uh, I think that he, he can fix the problems over at DOJ, uh, and we're willing to work with him. So you don't uh, think he should be fired from his job? Well, look, that's not my decision. Uh, all I can say is that, that Mr. Rosenstein uh, has a long career. Uh, but look, he, he's never really been in Washington, D.C. But you know there a, are some members who are using this to question the Mueller investigation. Are you separating the two? Well, I think what's happening is I think the mainstream media and the Democrats uh, are tying this to the Mueller investigation because they're trying to perpetuate this nonsense of obstruction of justice because they've left the Russia collusion issue. They know there was no collusion. Uh, and, and, you know, I've been saying this for a year now that there was no evidence of collusion. Are there other and memos? so now you fast forward. Are there other mem ahead, memos Brett. that are going to come out? Are there other memos? You said this was phase one. Yeah, so this, so this completes uh, just the FISA abuse portion uh, of our investigation. Uh, we, are, we are in the middle of what I call phase two of our investigation, which involves other departments, uh, specifically the State Department and some of the involvement that they had in this. Uh, that investigation is ongoing, uh, and we continue to work towards uh, finding answers uh, and, and asking uh, the right questions to try to get to the bottom. Uh, of what exactly the State Department uh, was up to in terms of this Russian investigation. Quickly, Mr. Chairman, uh, some people have called you a Russian agent. Others have said you should be fired. Uh, the barbs today on cable TV were pretty amazing. Um, your thoughts in dealing with all of this in the job that you have? Yeah, it's actually uh, quite enjoyable. Uh, because I, cause we have the underlying facts. We've been investigating this for a really long time. So you know that you're over the target yeah. when you're being attacked from all sides. Mr. Chairman, and we so have to the, leave it there. The computer's going to cut us off. We appreciate the time, right. sir, and uh, we will follow it up. Thank you, Brett. Thank you.